Um, don't know what to say. It's been a great day. Um, I have very little of a voice left, but that's okay. Playing for number one here. Uh, we got James Matchett over here on the left hand side, and uh, Wilson Wise. I'm sorry, is it Wilson or? Yeah, Wilson Wise. Wilson Wise? Yeah. I've been mispronouncing your name all day. I probably, I think I said Watson once. I have no idea what. So we got all four of us over here. Let's just so say. Come on in, chat. <laughs> you, you can stand in front of us, and we won't be. We won't be out. Yeah, <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Wait, we do, we have we have that we have the top of Chad's head here. We could do we could also do this, but let's not make it. Oh yeah, let's. <laughs> so all four of us are here now. We're going to be doing commentary for the rest of the game here. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun here, uh, guys. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends this is going to be the championship for the for the championship plaque that's going on here. Um, first place trophy. The first pl gold decimator. The fr yeah, so the first place trophy we actually have right here, and this is done again done by Chad. I'm going to take a look at it here. There is the. I cannot get my my angle right here. Story of my life. There you go. So like there. My favorite part about it, if you actually took took a look at it there, you actually do have the thrusters painted and everything as well. This is your first place trophy. Second place is going to get the hawk. Go, it's silver hawk right here. Out of focus, but looks lovely anyway. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> wish we wish we had some music with that, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, little, little lady from Ipanema. <laughs> yep. So not only are they getting that, but they're also going to be getting a uh, a first round buy to regionals as well, which is and the plaque is pretty snazzy here as well. You want to get the plaque over here? Yeah. Plaque is rather snazzy, so we're gonna kind of take some time here and waste some time while while they're getting set up here. This is the plaque. 2015 store champion. Chad did not paint this. We tried to get him to, but he he didn't have that much time. Uh, or he's got lots of talent. Let's not call it that, you know. I paint models, not. It's it's too flat for him to paint. He couldn't get all the niches and crannies and everything right there. So um, looks like we're getting set up here. Let me uh, switch camera over. All right. Yeah, we're already in rock place, Matt. It looks like we're. Just hold on to that so everybody can hold on to it. You're the short one, so you can get that one. Okay. So, again, we have James Matchett on the left here. Um, and his, uh, what are we running here? James Matchett is running uh, Dash, uh, right. Dash, Push Bill. the Limit, Heavy Laser Cannon, Outrider Title, Kyle Katarn, and Engine Upgrade for a total of 58 points. His other pilot is Corrin Horn. In the E-Wing, he's flying with R2-D2 and fire control system for a total of 99 points on his list. Now, his opponent, Wilson Wise, also a 99-point list, is flying Kian Farlander, stay on target, heavy laser cannon and advanced sensors for a total of 41 points, a blue squadron B-Wing for 22 points, and three bandit squadrons, each at 12 points. It's going to be, it's, you know, we got the, the battle of the two different uh, kind of rebel metas going on. We got uh, the two ship list, 58 dash, uh, I guess, as everyone knows it. And then, you know, a, a B and a Z, you know, like. So Dash really started getting popular when? With this past wave here? Or the well, one before he that? came out in this wave. No. He this came out in this wave, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So. Um, and his ability is. is Pretty amazing uh, and, and pretty almost, unique. It, it almost makes placing asteroids like not that. Well, no, I feel like it makes it even more important because with Dash, especially, like this is what I was having trouble with, and I explained this earlier, is that you've got that range one bubble. If you're running the Outrider t right, title sure. with the heavy laser cannon, you've got that range one bubble. Now, there are plenty of ships that can keep up with you, especially if they have an engine upgrade or if they just have a faster dial. Um, range five move. Um, so in order to outrun the ships, you have to cut through the asteroids that they have to go around. Sure. That's a good point. Sure. So, so and, and you really want to use those asteroids for cover and, and get around anyway. So they're, they're, we're about to put down the dials here. So, so, okay. is, so is, the, the, is the way to beat Dash, is it to, to stay within range one for or me, out of range three? Yeah, stay in range one and block him. Okay. Yes, for me, that's what shut me down was when people blocked yeah, him. Dash is and one of those action economy ships. You, just, you have to get actions on him because otherwise he's just not doing anything. Yeah. Like that. 
and right now Wilson Wise has initiative. So Kean Farlander is going to be moving first, which you know it, it could de you know possibly swing it into Dash Rundar's favor because he's going to be moving second. He's going to have that ability to barrel roll and you know the potential to boost out of arc right. of a lot of the shots or into range two, allowing him that heavy laser cannon shot that's really important. I'm looking at his build here with stay on target, heavy laser cannon, and advanced sensors. How important is stay on target on this one? It seems like it's the key to everything. Stay on target is one of those things that can add a stress for Kian's ability to activate. So what we saw in the last match, uh, Kian Farlander basically just choosing any maneuver at range two, sometimes a K-turn, and just changing that over to something else, a two bank, a uh, two straight, and or a two hard. So, you know, that, it gives him the stress. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get penalized for just choosing the K-turn and getting a double stress. He is only getting one stress. He can use advanced sensors to take his right. action beforehand. So he can potentially have a focus or a target lock in order to boost that stress, which is going to give him a huge attack bonus that he can just spend... You know, at any point in time during his attack, he does he is not required to spend that stress right. on a focus token. He can right. spend it on a blank result, just this like also, Garvin Drake. This also really opens up the B Wing style. Because oh, yeah. this means you can Good effectively point. as long as you have a shot, you can do a red turn any every turn. And it's got the one hard, it's got the two K, um, which are both just Phenomenal uh, move, especially when you're up close in those tight groups where there's a lot of bumping and everything. Um, being able to unlock that that dial and, and do those red maneuvers every turn and just whip it around, uh, it, it completely changes the way the ship plays. Yeah. So and with and with advanced sensors, Keen is not worried about bumping. He can right. take his action yeah. first. He can oh, yeah. still stress, which is right. his huge offensive bonus for him. All right, so we have our opening moves going out. Uh, Wilson Wise doing his uh, little standardized uh, move Same that we, we saw, saw last, last game. game. <laughs> so we have Kean Farlander also moving first. So Wilson's entire list moves before James. How important, Dylan, let's talk about this, is the placement of where he actually uh, puts his squad. Some of them I've seen will actually put it started from the middle. Some will kind of, I put it directly in front of, but he actually put it a diagonally or caddy corner from uh, where the – where James put his. How do you, important is that? Uh, well, for here, I guess this is going to give him more room for approach. So he's going to be able to kind of feel out what the other player is doing and then adjust accordingly. Um, I, I just can't, I don't you see know, I, it as being as huge advantage. Yeah, it's not really, I mean, I think one thing is, is having all those rocks between them too, is he did, he is putting as many rocks between the two of them as he can, which uh, I, I would have to say it's going to give Dash a little bit more of an advantage because, like I said earlier, he can just cut right through those where the other ships have to go around. And that, that was my next question. Do they go through or do they go around? Well, like, if you t take a look at, if you've got this bottom right rock here uh, that's, that's the closest one to the Rebel players, at, at some point in this turn, either either uh, the, the two ship list here on the left is going to either come straight, turn in and come straight down or come across, and the... The, the bottom the player on the right here is going to have to choose whether he cuts in tight or tries to go around and having that rock right in your way is going to is going to limit him he's not going to be able to just turn and have a, a 45 degree angle across the board he's going to have to choose or fly past it um, so that that's going to that's going to come into play um, and like I said earlier dash doesn't have to worry about that he can cut through any of those he can boost and barrel roll off the rocks um, I think what you're going to see is the, the Z's acting as blockers and the, the Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. In this game. I agree. Um, Dark Father, just to let you guys know, yeah, this has been a long day. It is now uh, after midnight Eastern Standard Time here. We've been doing this since 11 in the morning, so <laughs> we're going on our 13th hour here. And then some people actually had to drive from some places five or six hours away to get here. Yeah. Yep. Um, also, just to kind of let you know, uh, Wilson Wise told me before this game, this is his first tournament. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so there you go. Into, getting into the top two in his first tournament is pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. So hats yeah. off to him on that. Uh, so movement happening again. Uh, we have the Z95s. They're doing a uh, three straight forward. They're now all going to focus. Interesting. You're seeing the, so he's choosing. He's going to probably try to shoot past that asteroid and then cut. That's uh, yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brandon, to answer your question, Kian, you have it right. He's got stay on target, advanced sensors, and then heavy laser cannon, as a, as all viewings tend to have nowadays. Yep. All right, so once again, all right, the entire the team for Wilson. Nick. Is that? Is that yeah. Right? yeah, that's Nick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was also wondering yeah. about that. Yep. He said he was going to come back on here, so. 
Um, Nick, you have a fan club. They're waiting for you over there. I'm sure they'll come and say hi to you. <laughs> if you see anybody in pink, that's them. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody out there, feel free to give us your predictions, and uh, we'll give you plus one internet points if you're correct. So. All right, so Dash Rendar doing a one straight forward. Cornhorn doing a one straight forward also. This is a. Now this, I wonder if we're going to see one of those matches where the, the players just trade sides of the board and then it. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I, I mean, I think you're going to see Dash cut in at some point. The, the Zs are going to cut in at some point. And then it's just going to be like a, you know, up and down kind of game here. Well, the, well Dash, what, Dash effectively works as a flanker. So you don't want to fly him right at the ships. You want to fly him kind of right. beyond them. Um, and, and the neat thing about Dash as a flanker is because he's got that 360 arc, you can just fly past people and shoot behind you. Right. In, in, in kind of the same way, I mean... All, all 360 ships have that ability, but I feel like Dash is unique in that he is built as a flanker. He is the he is the only big ship flanker. Um, the fact that he has two evade dice for a large ship. Um, it's really huge. It's yeah. Really huge. Plus, you know, you can get focus, and I think what you can change something to an evade at some point. Or am I wrong? Uh, oh, which one for Dash? Yeah. All right. So Dash Rendar has the Kalkatarn crew. So every single time that you strip a stress off. Especially with push the limit, you're gaining a free focus as assigned to you. So you can actually still take a focus action and you can still push the limit and you know possibly do a target lock. So you can have he's gonna two have focuses and, and he's gonna have an offensive and defensive yeah. focuses if he has to spend them at all. And you know, the next turn he clears off that stress, push the limit, he can run right over rocks, he can Boost, barrel roll with, uh, you know, engine upgrade and, uh, you know, the natural ability, the latent talent of the Outrider, the first large ship with a barrel roll that's organic right. to that ship. Right. So, Do you think this is going to be the wave of the future when Wave 7 comes out where you see Star Vipers and all that are able to do the same thing? Or, I mean, or is this, or is this so going to be really unique? It's, there's really, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to tell until you get it on the table yeah. and you play with it and, right. see, yeah. and see how it behaves. I mean, you can kind of theorize, you can do the math, but... All right, so they, uh, the uh, Z95s and the B just uh, did a uh, hard turn, was that, hard turn, it's a two right, yeah, so two right, and... The question I was running is, I wasn't, I wasn't I'll, let's try this again, I was going to wonder how long that they were going to stay in formation until all hell breaks loose here. It looks like because of the, this boulder, um, this asteroid here, they had to kind of break the formation space to boulder. a barrel out. Space boulder, very large space <laughs> boulder, I mean, I that think, can ruin well, ships. What is... Going on here. I think he did. He didn't want to bump. So um, change his style. So no, he he advanced into his barrel roll oh, down yeah, the yeah, table yeah. and then did the yeah. two hard up. He's, so he's still That's pretty fine. much in formation. He's he's got a good yeah. good tight group I think there. It's, like, it's, like, it's, it's kind of a two using uh, an yeah. asteroid. And Dash, is, Dash, Dash just did a uh, what was that? It, like it looked like a three. Yeah, it looks like a three. I think it's a three. Yeah, it's a three. All right, so he just did a three soft to the right. He's gonna be choosing his actions. Yeah, James, I, I have to agree with you. I think um, when uh, Scum and Villainy comes out, I think you're going to see actually a lot more interceptors with the auto thrusters. Um, I don't know if you're going to see. You probably will definitely going to see the uh, the ships that come in Scum and Villainy, but those uh, those upgrade cards that are going to be in there, sp specifically auto thrusters, you're going to see a lot of interceptors like Suture Fell that like just don't die nowadays. Yeah. So. You know, Scum and so Villainy, here, here Wave 6 barrel coming out. From Dash. Yeah, there's, there's the Dash barrel So he barrel roll. rolls onto the rock. He just doesn't yeah, care. And then we're probably going to see a boost. See a boost. Mm. So, uh, yeah, there was there was a small flub. All right, advanced sensors had to be uh, activated before so he's the was revealed. But, I mean, these guys are frazzled. They're a little bit tired and stuff like that. Uh, James forgave him and just let it happen. Yep. So... Now, so it looks like we're gonna we're gonna have shots between the, B, the, the at least the one B wing and Dash, and this is not terrible for for um, for Dash Rendar because he's only that's one that's one on one. No one else is shooting. Looks so. like he's got a range three shot. Yeah. And, uh, All right, there. so there's the four dice. Three natural hits. All right. He's rolling and in a little one. box there on the bottom. And there's one evade, so that's two shields down on that blue squadron B wing. 
When you, when you look at this build here, and if I wasn't running a, uh, okay, so I can't even think of what it is, right? What else would you run? The first thing I'm thinking is I would run a moldy crow with that. All right, so one crit mold, gets now, through, now and you mold the shield goes the reason down. Is because, because it's able to hold on to the, to the focus tokens, and then with, with its ability, you're able to actually give those tokens, especially with that stress that it keeps on giving itself because it keeps on running into rocks and stuff like that. Um, so I don't I don't think so because you you're gonna use the they're not gonna well, whatever, I, okay so as so any flanking ship mm -hmm. it doesn't want to fly in formation like that's the same reason why you don't see interceptors flown sure. in formation is flanking ships want to go off on their own they want to sure, be okay. able to move wherever they want they don't want to have to wait for another ship. Mm -hmm. Um, especially, I, I would imagine, I've actually never flown the Crow, but I'd imagine it has a very different dial between... It's considerably different. Yeah, considerably yeah. different between that and Dash. Right. Um, and see, th 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 that's what makes a, a lot of sense to me, is that you, you would want, usually you would have, like, the Moldy Crow flanking yeah. something and being able to shoot back and forth. You wouldn't want it as its main ship so and then have the, the, have the Outrider as your flanker. This, so. I mean, for, for my builds, personally, I don't like putting all my points into one ship. He's, he's made it work. He knows how to fly dash, so, I mean, obviously, for me, like, because there's always going to be something that can counter it. Right. Um, so if, if you put all of your points into one ship, obviously all you have to do is destroy that ship, and you're, you're done. Yeah. And that's why I'm on this side of the board versus that side yeah. of the board. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that exactly what you did today, Dylan? Well, I mean, hey, it worked out pretty well. That's true. I can't. Um, I, had the, I, I mean, after the Swiss, I, I believe I had either the, the second highest MOV, oh, so yeah. I'm feeling... I mean... <laughs> I'm not going to say you're a bad player, but it's like, yeah. I mean, Redbeard says only way to kick Super Dash is tie him up in Nat Cloud, so I'm guessing that means, like, you uh, like swarm with the block, deck. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people are talking about throwing up uh, these B-Wings here. Just kinda, I would yeah, want to, I would want to, because the B-Wings have the higher here comes dice, the, uh, have the higher DPS. All right, B-Wing so. has revealed his maneuver dial. He's doing a three Four. straight forward. Three straight forward. See, yeah. now that's... Or is going right at. at. Now here's the problem with this though is the dash is gonna be able to just barrel roll and boost all the way out of there. Oh yeah, absolutely. No problem. So he's choosing. Now, now that might have caused a bump though. That might have. Right. That's that's a block. That might have been that, the theory. That, that may be what he's but I would have exactly wanted. Right. I would have wanted to block with. The Z's in kind of a spread, in kind of like a flower that's, that's what blossom, I would want. and uh, save the B wings because you want those extra dice. B wings the three a and lock. four dice are going to be a lot better than the individual two. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so now the B wing just took a focus on Dash Rendar. He had the Z95s, and it just did a two yeah. turn to the right. And it, so if he does actually get that bump, that buzz put him in range one, which means it completely now, negates the HLC. Now, so. what do you think the thing the 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 yeah. idea here is with that mm. with that too I, hard. Yeah. Is I don't he, know do if you think he's, he's losing. Do you, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that he's probably trying to put him behind a rock, I think and he's going to take that target lock on dash. So he's yeah. kind of hiding behind the rock. So okay, he has okay. Day yeah. dice at range yeah. three. I, I I totally see that. And you know yeah. what? It, you know what? And if dash decides to to barrel roll. Right, so actually that is not bad coverage because now if he dodges that B-wing arc, he's going to be in that Z95 arc. Yeah. The problem that I'm seeing here is that if you go by the rules, uh, you know, it's closest to closest here. Mm -hmm. nice. So what's going to happen here is that his closest to hit to uh, to the to the X-wing's closest is not oh, yeah, behind yeah. the rock, so he may not be shooting from behind the rock. Well, I, d I don't think it's so much about the rock. I think it's he's trying to spread his arcs out, which is actually I, okay. a good strategy that, that here okay, based off sense. of where Dash is going to want to go. I think he's also trying to Go ahead and accumulate those target locks, maybe. So next turn he's, he's got it. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm trying to only say things that like have already transpired. Yeah. <laughs>the mute button here. It's a glorious thing. I accidentally yeah. hit it earlier. It's like, uh, what happened? So, once again, thanks to the 91 of you that are watching. We really appreciate it. For those of you who have already gotten home, I'm glad you've gotten home safely. For those of you who are on the road, please get home safely. And do why check are you out the watching archives. this feed yeah, if you're on the road? Yeah. <laughs> do you re don't you realize that you're using your data? That's right. <laughs> Alright, so it expires. Uh, for those of you also just joining us, this is the final match in the FCB Store Championship. Uh, James Matchett with uh, into 58 the gritty. Dash, That's right. and Wilson Wise with a Rebel Swarm ZZZ BB, and one of those Bs is Kean Fallander. Fits just barely right there. Pretty good positioning. Um, 
Yeah, I think, I think you just called it, Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. So Dash just moved into range one of that B wing, and we're gonna go ahead and see what he does. If you're looking at it from kind of a novice's eyes like mine are, you're seeing five different arcs all pointed in the same direction, yeah. basically. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that stay on target is a really, really cool ability. Oh, he barrel rolled. Okay. So. All right. So Dash Rendar moved into. He's going for a boost. Whoa, that is oh, super that close. Is, that's really good flying. Now he just put himself at range one of Keen Farlander though with the stress on him. So. And the back Z with the target lock. He did. I mean, that that Z95 that did it too hard to the right. You know, basically putting some extra guns on. I think uh, we have at think least we have at least three arcs. We have at least three arcs on it's on two. dash. It's two. No, that, I think that the the the, the Z one, maybe. the Z know. behind the, the, the there's the two far right. back left right Zs. Right I think all of they definitely. Oh, have oh I, I thought I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And so. then the B wing because they're the here comes Cornhorn. Corn's <laughs> getting in the game. He's, you see the meter. All right, so corn horn, four forward, and a barrel roll. Hey, Tabletop General, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're trying to keep it where we're talking about what has already happened, not necessarily what is about to happen. So we're trying not to, to help these guys out because they get a little bit with that. Speaking um, about what's about to happen, I think we're about to see some, uh, some good attacks going damage. on right yeah. here. Yeah. I'm smelling damage. Yep. So... Here you go, attack dice being rolled. Yeah, it's pretty good. Range hit so one. Far. Looks like three. Yeah, you got uh, three hits. Is turning hit, so three hits in total. Oh man, three hits. Yeah, that's gonna flank off two shields. That's gonna that's gonna take off one shield. So Dash was able to get two evades on that. Z 95s Or no. Four hits. Now who was that on? It was from Dash. Oh, oh, and that just wipes out one Z95. That's four hits. Just a boom. Yep. That's a big hit right there. That was interesting. That was that was a shot on a Z95 that I don't think had one, which is an interesting choice. I don't think that that was the best shot he could have taken. Well, you know, the other one was behind the rock. And then he might have been range one on the other the other ship. So yeah, that yeah. might have been that might have been the best shot. I mean, he cleared it off the table. It worked. So. Okay, so he was <laughs> points he's checking points yeah. when it comes to that. So all right, so here we go. It's the let's see what range. All right, so range two shot. One crit. See now. And he's gonna spend his target lock. He's gonna try and push that crit through. And he does. And he succeeds. So hit crit. And two evades two from evades Dash. Kind of huge evades from Dash. Yep. You see, I would, I would be, I mean, Dash is going to be fine. But he's still got 10 hit points total. Five yeah. of those are shields. All right. Next Z95 firing through the rock. Uh, skins, yeah. Um, so he's been rolling this box all day. So, Blanks. you know, we're not going to worry about it. We can see. And in, in, in James's build here, how important is Calcatarn? Calcatarn, uh, stripping off the focus, or uh, stripping off the stress with, from push the limit and adding the free focus assigned so to your ship good. is so good because you're essentially building a, you know, a triple action ship that, you know, potentially could sway the balance in one way or the other. You get the focus, you can still take the second focus, or you can barrel roll and boost right. out of arcs. Right. So you're, you're basically flying around with a ship that is, for the most part, always going to have a modified attack with that focus if it can kind of stay out of everyone else's arc and it doesn't have to spend it defensively. Right. Now his evade dice, he was able to evade both shots from the Z95s that had arc on him. Jimmerly has been in and out all day, so... Yeah, so... Now... I don't know. I, I mean, maybe that was from the rock. I don't know if that was the Z95. Uh, yeah, that last, the, that last Z95 was firing through an asteroid at, uh, at a... Uh, Dash Rendar, so he had to, he got the ability to roll the extra evade, so, you know, it's, it, it missed anyway, so. So, 
here's, here's the dirty thing about Dennis Schroeder. He's, he's doing fine. He, he, made, he took a few shots. Did he even take any damage on Did he take one damage? I think he took shield off. He took one shield off. I only see three on the clock. Two shields. He took two shields, two shields off the okay. So he's he's fine. He's, he's got plenty of... Yeah, of Farlander did shoot, but he was only and able to get one hit in. Now there. he's going to be pretty much behind all those ships and, and moving away from he's, them. He's in a good spot. Yeah, yeah. He's, Dash is in a pretty good spot. Corrin, I think everything's... I mean, tr not to try to, like, you know, say exactly what I think they should do, but just of what is probably going to happen. You're going to see probably attention turned to Korn yeah. as, he, as he pulls up. And uh, you're right, you know, with with Kyle Katarn, if you strip off one stress, even if it's from R3A2 after you've taken personal limit, you're still going to have that focus action, so really, it's, really it's good. pretty good for action really economy. Good. I mean, it, even if you're not using it on offense, it still makes your defense that much better. Right? So. Alright, so the dials, the dials are down. How do you feel about this buzzsaw Korn with fire control system? Okay. I mean, I think it makes the second shots that mm. much better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, so. I mean, that, that's some of the frustration I've had with Korn is with that second shot if you don't have a modifier. Right. You, you're, it's just wasted. Yeah. Now, I've, I've Blue seen squadron. people... You can put gunner on him, right? Or? Uh, you can't put gunner. What you do is you put... I've seen people put, uh, like, a uh, marksmanship. Uh, okay. And then... Because that, you don't spend it. It lasts through your... It lasts through the whole turn. Right. Through the whole turn. Right. It only gives you one crit. But it, 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 all your other focus results become hit. Right. Um, yeah, it's okay, so I definitely run that with marksman. The first, uh, the first blue squadron B-wing did a K turn, and then the Z95 just moved in to block dash. Yeah, it looks like that he's expecting. Uh, so and he's gonna eat that rock. Gotta, and gotta that, in, that next Z95 right just did a turn, and he's gonna eat that rock. He bombs, but I guess it doesn't matter if you're eating uh, space rocks. Yes, da Dash is in fact stress. He pushed a little bit last turn. I think so. Yep. Oh, and he went through the rock. I oh, think he did takes, He takes a damage. He's losing a shield off of the Z95. Yep. That's okay at the moment. It's not going to do a lot it's, now, it's, but... How, how often do you find yourself in a situation where you choose to just plow through it? Just to, I want that positioning, I want to go in for that block, I want to go in for that shot, I'm just going to eat the rock, I'm going to go for it. Kian Farlander it's using really advanced sensors. Alright, so Kian Farlander using advanced sensors, and he's going to reveal a K-turn. Alright, so we have a 2K turn from Kian Farlander. He's going to be moving behind Dan. Thank you very much, Chris. We understand there's a delay. Appreciate it. <laughs> Love you. Mean it. So, Go what, is, what does experimental interface really do for this? I mean, all right. So, experimental interface allows you to take an extra action that has the action title on the upgrade card. Right. So, for instance, sure. if you're using, uh, I'll just use this real easy one, Big's Dark Lighter. Everyone always wants to make Big's Dark Lighter have more evade dice, so that way he survives longer. Because everyone's shooting at him. Right. R2F2 grants that extra agility dice, right. but you can't take an action. You can't put R2D6 right. on to give him push the limit. Sure. So instead, you put Experimental Interface on him, and so now you have six points sunk into him, but you still get that focus action right. because it allows you to take R2F2 because it's out of your action bar as your second action for a stress. So it's kind of like a three-point additional push the limit. What I've also noticed being in the crow's nest today is that a lot of the guys that are running the Fat Han are running experimental interface in there as well. Lando, C-3PO, experimental interface was one that was going up that we've seen a couple times through here. Are we talking about okay. the, the Lando crew or the Lando ship? Lando crew. Han Solo, Lando crew, C-3PO. Um, so Lando is, is like my favorite card because it's just so fun. Like, it's it's so, fun, I mean, and it's not when so it works, it works well, right. but yeah, it, it, the thing is, is to waste an action on something that could give you nothing. I mean, it could give you both, right? When you, can, like, when, when you can use other action economies to get, you could, there's other ways to get an evade and a focus right. guaranteed. Right, yeah, exactly. I mean, for less points even, sometimes, sure. if, if you build it right, and you yeah. push the limit and the Millennium Falcon. So Cornhorn just it's made a shot there. on yeah. the Z95, and there was no damage. Yep, whipped on that one. All right. Sweat Dagger, we're um, about to see what happens next here. Next up. Cornhorn has a lock on that bandit. I think he's got a shot on. Uh, I think 
Are these are these two blocking? Are they are they bumping there? Yeah. Okay. So. Well. Okay, so he's spending the focus, and he's going to be rolling four hits. All right. Blue Squadron B wing. Blanks, and he's down to one hole right after that, or one hole point gets taken off. Excuse me. So that's three shields and one hole, and one. That's HLC big. attack. That's, that's a huge one. That's one big attack there. But that's the reason they also have that HLC card. It does. When it hits, it hits big. Yeah. Yeah. It take, you've seen it many times today. Take ships out in one swing. Mm -hmm. take, taking uh -oh. that many shields out is important. Well, also, like, I, All right, so another thing that doesn't get addressed as much Two hits and two focuses. Kean Farlander is spending his stress, and he's going to be trying to put four damage on Dash Rendar. But as far as the heavy laser cannon, back to that just for a second, the the fact that you're denying that range right. three extra evade, right. and that that so can come, yeah. So and you're you're gaining one, and then they're losing one yeah. range three. And then he loses. He just lost. Uh, he rolled one evade, but three of those damage got through. Takes the last two shields off of uh, Dash Rendar and puts one whole damage onto him. All right. Next B wing is taking a shot. He's spending his target lock. He has a crit. And there's two, two crits. crits. That's big. That's big. Two crits get through on Dash Rendar. Yeah, yeah. Want to say hi to Alexis who just uh, just uh, damaged engine. On. Hi Alexis. Damaged engine and direct hit. Oh. Dash Rendar is down to one whole point left. That's that's big. I think you might go down right here. Remember that that part where I said I thought Dash was gonna be fine. Range one Z95. Got one. And that's going to clear Dash Rendar from the board. All right, so now we just got to deal with Korn. And uh, I, th I think he's in a good spot to do it, too. He's got a lot of spread out. still got a lot of ships out. left on him. Yeah, yeah but I mean, Korn will have that double totally attack. take one out of turn, or one every other turn. He's, gonna, but he's is running he gonna RG2 risk on there, too, so right, he can so hit and run. And <laughs> it's going to be a long battle, I think so. So do, do we see the arch kind of uh, solidify here and go, go all attack out on this guy? Oh, yeah, I mean, what else are they going to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it just—it seems like to me that you either either go at him with all guns blazing from one side, or you go for uh, attack him from every side. Yeah. So it looks like he uh, just kind of whiffed with that attack there. So that was pretty brutal. Two blanks and I, and then two blanks and I twice on from that. So. Double tap Corrin, just use his double tap, and he Corrin rolled two blanks in an which means uh, he has to go fully evasive gonna, right now. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to survive one turn here and then maybe come back and deal some damage. Yeah, I mean, you know, he can easily take out one of those B-wings. Yeah, the, the one B-wing is damaged, I think, the other... I mean, he could hurt this. So he's this got a couple. Right he's got a couple options for one shot, then. But did he did he double tap that last he round? So he's got to go. He's kinda, yeah. yeah, he's got to go hide. Uh, yeah, he's he's, he's got to hide for a couple of turns, and they're gonna they're, they're gonna come straight at him. So all right, dial, dials are going down. I don't, down. I don't think that's telling him what to do. I just yeah, think that's I mean, James knowing. Yeah. There, I mean, I feel yeah. like there there are a few things that like any any competent X-wing player can look at this board and tell what's going on and knows what needs to happen where. Right. The 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 devil's in the details. So right. when we say obviously they're gonna obviously they're gonna want to get their arcs on corn. Obviously corn's <laughs> gonna want to run away. Yeah. They know this. We know this. Hopefully, this is for the maybe the novices at home that that maybe don't know this. I know when I started playing this game, one of the things I would watch all the battle reports I could on, because right. <laughs> I have way too much time on my. So, is that? No, that's actually now that looks pretty right. close yeah, to the edge of the board there. No, that K turn. That's, that's, no, that's that's from that's James. Uh, James Ayers, and he's James like, Ayers. I should have totally, just, totally chose Prelis to just had a, We just yeah. had a K yeah. turn off the board. I don't know if y'all saw that. We just had a Z. Oh man. Oh wow. We had a so Z one Z just. just committed suicide right off the board. So, so things got a little bit easier for Corn. So, something interesting I want you to want to bring to your attention. Uh, Nick uh, just said, you know, he was one of the guys that was here earlier, says he's working on a four-ship build now. Going forward, what do you see? It's it's so hard to tell. I mean, I, I, I think now that you've seen, now that you have all these big 360 arc ships um, that are kind of more phantom and interceptor repellent, 
I I saw at this tournament a resurgence of jousters and like the four ship rebel builds, and those because that's what you want to do to take down the two ship list. Those work really well against two and three ship lists. Um, do you think you're going to see a lot of the big ship with a kind of a mini swarm, or do you see? Yeah, I mean that's that's, that's, that's always going to be popular. I mean that that's always going to be a good buy because then you have all the blockers and all those extra and dice then a, thrown. And then a turret that shoots in 360 that's, with your that's primary what makes attack. That yeah. so well. Now I want to like I, would just, I w there was a point that I kind of wanted to, to touch earlier about like and kind of at the beginning of this looking at, at who had more red dice. You've got you had the three Z95s and the two B wings, so that's a total of. Yeah. Six plus four Maybe. plus three. Yeah. The problem that we're running into here is that exactly what Terrorhawk said is that that was a full health C2. There was yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there, oh, oh, there, there was a lot of shields that he just got rid of there. by accident flying off the board here. Well, I mean, he, he doesn't necessarily need it, but if he, he makes another mistake like that again, got a heavy that's a mistake you make once. It's a mistake you make once. Well, right. he's got... I don't know what language that is. Exactly. using heavy laser cannon. Like two shields getting stripped two off. Two right shields there. getting stripped off of Cornhorn. Right. <laughs> Range two from the other B wing. I gotta say, turn it. No, no heavy And laser. that's one hit. Spending a target lock. It's a reroll. Reroll is two blanks. blanks. Oh. And, it's evaded. and easily evaded. So, just an unfortunate dice roll there. Yeah. He really had him where he could take that other shield off and make it really, really difficult. Yep. I mean, he's got he's to regain another shield right now. So. Yep. Well, oh, he here's, the thing. Actually, here's the thing. Is next turn he can shoot, but everybody's behind him. So he can, yeah. he, can but he, has, the, he can take the shield or he can turn around and shoot back. And he's in a really interesting position because he has two really slow B-wings. Now, uh, that's what I'm doing. You know, and then there's, you know, they got that rock, you know, right there and... You know, I mean, well, also, the sensors are also on the one B wing only has two hole left, right? He's now gonna he's he's gonna, he's shoot, gonna be first. shoot first, so he could easily flip around and he can use fire control system and he can double tap. He has a huge problem though, because uh, Kean Farlander still has his full yeah, hit Kean point. Yeah, is still Kean's Kean's the the his bane right now. And check this out. I want to bring this to your attention. The the B wing that's up front is the one that has the two hit points uh, uh, taken off of it, where the one that's behind is full with full shields. Yeah, and Kean Farlander. But here's the thing: is he can easily exactly right, he can so. easily advance sensors and then yeah. do his his four red and get the stress that he wants and have really good positioning. Yeah. So. Keen's I mean, G95 taking a target lock after yeah, doing a two bank to the left. Yeah. We're seeing these ships kind of close in on him. Okay, and, 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 and we see a one bank to the right by Blue Squadron. So it's going to be interesting to see what James does here. Does he, you know, okay. does he turn around? Okay, now we're on Keen. Oh, all right, target lock from the Blue Squadron. Yeah. Uh, the, the 100, 101 of you that are still watching, we'd like to hear your comments. We're getting a lot of them. You can see them on the right-hand side so of the screen. Like an, yeah, so <laughs> now, now, Metternich, I want to let you know, I made this mistake earlier with a different game where I said something was over in one turn, and it took three turns for this <laughs> to, for, for it to end, and the guy almost lost because of that. So I mean, now, I'm not going to make the now podcast what, curse here, on this Here one is here. what Korn has going for him. He does have his double tap ability. He right. does have three evade dice. Yeah. He does have pilot skill. Yeah. He's a faster ship. He's also a faster ship. Kian Farlander, advanced sensors, barrel rolls off to the side, and then he moves. So he's actually legging it. He's legging it. Yeah, he just pushed it. Oh, no, oh, he's, gee, that was he's a K-turn. He's using what I call the GTFO Alrighty. technique here. No, he's, he's oh, going his face turn. Just turn. There's a stress. Okay. All right, he's so three he's got a range three shot. shot. Now he's taking it at Kian here, which is interesting. No, he's not. He's, he's not? not. Oh, he looked like he was measuring for Kian. All right, so there it is. That that fire control system just switched over. Easy. Did he? Looks like nothing happened there. He already he took the shot and it it. it All right, Kian Farlander spends his stress. All right, so the last shield is gone from Kian, uh, from Corn Horn. Blue Squadron B wing. Oh, that's three crits. <laughs> For those of you keeping score at home, that's six drinks. Yeah, and the game is over. Wilson Wise, winner with the Rebel Swarm.
Wilson Wise has won the FCB Store Championship in you know, 2015. Uh, try to clear that bean was as, successful as, as tricky as Kian is, you're, that was still a very classic X-Wing list. Oh, yeah. That's that's still a very classic formas, formation flying, focus fire, target lock, K-turn. Right yeah. Oh, yeah. He, and... See the trophy getting slid in there, his his prize. Big old Desmare there with uh, the hawk on the left for James. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome. Oh wow. So this guy, remember, let's let's go back. This is his first tournament yeah. that he's ever played. This is this has been a for him eight games now, or I'm sorry, nine games now that he's played in his first tournament. Thirteen hours worth of this stuff. Brain frazzled. Dang. But hey, I mean, he he brought it. He had a list. He understood his list, and he knew how to fly it. The list was solid. Yeah. Um, he didn't overfly it except for that one mistake that we saw where yeah. he flew off the board. Well, hey, look. That you play happens. You play that many. I mean, Good. my... It's so... I mean, basically, sometimes this game comes down to... Sometimes this game comes down to who makes the, the first mistake. Oh, right. Yeah. Sometimes it's just, I mean... You, you you clip an asteroid, you, you, you point you, the wrong direction, you, you misjudge a turn. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, uh, and, and that's it, and that's and that's what costs you the game. So that's – and you essentially play until someone makes a mistake, and then and then the other person gets I mean, the damage. I, he was able to, like, you know, minimize his mistakes and yeah, yeah. come back from it. So. Well, also having – like I was saying, having all that – Shit, all those ships having that much hole. Yeah. I mean, like, right. like that last match against the Imperials. I did not expect those three Z95s to take down Suntier. But like oh, I said, yeah, Suntier made a couple choice mistakes. He took he took, took a couple wrong turns, and the Zs were able to uh, pounce on him because he spread out his arcs. He kept target locks on him. He kept everybody facing in the right direction. Yep. Um, yep. Oh, hey. Okay. Who's those good right, looking guys? I don't know, but there's half of me. Yep. So, okay. Cool. So, so what did we learn today? All right. So <laughs> what did we learn today? It's still, it's still pretty valid. powerful. It's still valid. They just valid. changed the way it looks a little bit. It's valid. There were no. Well, there's only a, a few high skilled phantom lists today. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I think there were there was two there was two whispers and two two whispers with decimators those two ship builds so two ship builds becoming something that you know is is pretty big I mean we see a two ship build at the the top table we see two ship builds all over the place and a lot of turrets what's different about these two ship builds of what I've seen is that they're not a flagpole and support they're both pretty equal. Yeah. A lot yeah. of them you've seen the 55-45 yeah. split or the 51-49 splits that, that we saw a couple uh, today. Well, that goes back to what I said earlier about not wanting to put all your eggs right. in one basket. Right. Especially when I feel like X-Wing is so much a game of uh, rock, paper, scissors. Right. Is you're trying to paper somebody else's rock right. and rock somebody's scissors. Right. And if you come with just one kind of thing, if someone has the kind of thing that beats you, you're you're done. Right. Yeah, right. For is, the, is there a list that you see that uh, that coming with this wave and then with this new wave that's coming out in wave seven? Is there a list that can be the word I'm looking for immune to just about anything? Do you see anything being a lot more with wave, wave six is releasing? Uh, so scum and villainy wave six is getting is going to be releasing auto thrusters. It's it's been highly hyped yeah, right. because it's going to allow ships with the boost icon in their action bar to go ahead and take a, you know, essentially change a blank to right. an evade result right. whenever they're being fired at from range 3 right. or out of arc. So this is going to be a huge boon for interceptor players. Yeah. This is going to be a huge boon for anyone who has the boost action, really. Um, you know, it's coming out with the Star Viper sure. expansion pack, so sure. it's, it's something that we're looking, you know, forward right. towards to kind of break up some of this, like, heavily turreted meta that, right. you know, we see. Right. So, Kind of a, kind of nice to see. At the same time, like though, I, I'm seeing more and more area effects, like splash yeah, damage, right. weapons. Automatic damage. Right. You're gonna have dead man switch. Ruthless. You're gonna miss. have. Well, isn't there? Yeah. Isn't there one where you take an ion to give someone else an ion within range? Yes. And, All right. So. Yeah. Uh, what he's talking about is uh, something feedback. Someone help feedback us in the comments. Yeah, it's a feedback array. Feedback array. So right, feedback right. array, it it's really cool because you basically take an ion on yourself and right. you deal one damage 
to the enemy ship instead of taking an attack that round. Right. So automatic damage is going to be something that uh, Scum and Villainy is bringing to the table. And you don't have to have arc on it. And you don't have to have that's, arc. It's like a 360 so degree... Do, do, uh, but and, you and still have to have range, to, right? To FFG's... Yeah, I guess... Range, yeah, of course. Is it range one course. or is it... Re I don't remember, but... Okay. I mean... I think, to FFG's credit, they've done a very good job at designing everything to have a counter, and I right. think that's the key to, to keeping oh, yeah. X-Wing as a viable game. I agree, game. I agree. Uh, if there was one thing that beat everything, it, you wouldn't have a game. Right. Because yeah. everybody would just run right. that. Um, I think... I think TIE Swarm is always going to be viable, or, or the Swarm list in general. I'll, I'd have to disagree with that. Just because there are ways to, to fly them to control for things like interceptors and right. phantoms, but it is a lot harder. Right. I mean, any list can beat any other list if flown the right way, up to a point. I, I, I have... I have ran into situations with phantoms, and I did run into a situation with, with a fat hand where I literally couldn't kill. He, I, Dash had been killed. I came up against the, the fat hand, and he was able to use three, uh, 3PO and evade token and then R2-D2 right. to, yep. to negate three damage right. every turn and right. stay out of range one, yeah. so there's no possible way right. for me to kill him. Yep. A couple other questions before we sign off here. Five A-wings. You going to run it? <laughs> no. As much as I love, as much as I love uh, rebels, yep. I, I'm not gonna be running five. I do wings. like a, seeing the A wing in Tyco the game. Tyco with though. expert handling. Tyco with expert handling. Tyco with I'll be running that in Giga because mm. I, I got all my swag, so I'm just gonna yep. have fun now. Yep. Yeah. I come, out to, come out to Giga and beat that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Same is gonna be your target. This is your guy, guy at Giga here on the 31st. I would like it. to see some more A wing mini swarms. Yeah. With sure. Sure. That would be. Um, I've got another A wing on the way that I want to mm -hmm. want to try yeah. some of that. So, I think that especially yeah. with the refit. I it's agree. Just a couple uh, more points in Z ninety five. It's it's, it's, an, it's it's what a negative two. Uh, so you can put uh, one more thing in there. Fifteen yeah. points each if you don't take a missile. Uh, and if you are putting a missile on them, you're paying for that missile and seventeen that's points for a prototype. That's that's that. worth yeah. it. That's worth it. So the next one is at a uh, Giga on the thirty first. Gigabytes on the 31st. I'm definitely going to try going. I mean, obviously, the, uh, you know, obviously, the uh, work dependent on my time schedule, right. you know, seeing what I can do. Maybe I can get it off. Maybe not. Dylan, what about you? What's that? You going to the Giga on the 31st? Oh, we'll have to see. The, the, the wife lets me. I don't what, know. What about you? I'm probably not going. I am not that good. These guys would beat me even if I did play, so... Uh, Guys, this is it from FCB. We're going to uh, get an interview from, from the, the runner, winner and the runner-up. Yep. Thank you very much for watching, all 100-plus of you that have watched many times throughout the day. It's been great. Uh, give us any feedback. Again, it's on our website. It's on our Facebook page. I play games at FCB. Uh, X-Wing at FCB. There's FC, uh, the X-Wing group in Atlanta. We're also in the National X-Wing group. Fantasy Flight, thank you for all the pub that you've given us as well. We greatly appreciate it. Awesome. It's been great. Guys, yeah. thanks a lot. We're signing off. Have a great night. Right, right on. So, yeah, we got interviews still. Yeah, we got interviews. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, we're going to go ahead. We got galleries out. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, Guys, it's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Actually, I still need So we're going to get interviews from the winner and the runner-up here in just a couple seconds. So all 67 of you who have uh, who have uh, stayed, I really appreciate it. Dark Father, you guys are great. Thank you for, for hanging out with us. It's I know you're in Australia, if I remember right. So thank you very much for your time there. Fucking kangaroos. He's a Kiwi. I'm sorry, that's New Zealand. Sorry. 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 My, and my phone is ringing here. Yep. That was Alexis telling me, holy nerd talk. Thank you very much. James, you got a second with us? Yeah, I got a second. All right. Let me get this on here. All right. Let me get this button here. All right. All right. Guys, I want to introduce you to James Matchett. Um, ended up taking a runner-up here. I'm actually going to give you the thing here. So you're one of the guys I look at uh, when you – because you're one of the like, moderators of the groups, mm -hmm. and I see you making all these posts on things. And everything. Really, really is the avant-garde when it comes to uh, X-Wing in Atlanta. Undefeated until the last game. Yeah, well, no. Lost one earlier. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. lost. Oh, okay. Yeah, me and Rich played earlier. Yeah, me and Rich played earlier, uh, but, I, yeah, he, but I kept him at a modified win for that match. So, how'd this last game go? Uh, last game, I played a little bit aggressively with Dash. It didn't really pay off all that well. Uh, I saw a little bit of an opening with the B-Wings, but it didn't really pan out for it. So, 
but they're, they're making it where the Outrider uh, and uh, the, 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 that ship particularly is really a flanking ship. Mm. You don't really want to go head on with it. You can kind of go around and get out of mm. people's art. Um, I saw you in the, in the games that I watched. You really, really take advantage of that. Mm. Flying was impeccable and all yeah. that. What was it that, that, that really uh, was, was it being too aggressive with them this time that, that, that caused you to? Yeah, I mean, I hadn't I hadn't really pushed them that heavily, like up towards the front. Right. Uh, in all but about two of my games, uh, there was a game earlier of which I played against uh, Connor Jax, and Connor Jax was pushed way far out, right. and like I pushed up with it, took advantage of that, um, and really the only other time was I forget what it was, but there I really don't try to push the push push dash too far out there, uh, but I mean he he played it pretty well, pulled disease where I didn't think they were actually gonna go, so go on him. Played a great game. Uh, everything I saw, you looks like you, you knew how to fly it very well. Especially, you really know how to maneuver those yeah. wings. And how long have you been playing for this? So uh, I started playing around at the very end of the Kessel Run events in 2013. So that would have been like right at right when Wave Two was released. So. So it's just to, to the people like me who are novices and all mm -hmm. that. What makes you so good? Is it just playing the game over and it's over. It's time. Over yeah. Just... Yeah. I mean, you play like play with the ships a lot. Like like study and understand their movements I mean uh, I played with a bounty hunter list for probably nine months straight mm -hmm. and so like big ships that I know how to maneuver them like I'm used to maneuvering them even together uh, it's really a time thing for the most part uh, but the thing is too is eventually it gets to the point where you can't out maneuver your opponent so it comes down to a dice right. and that's what a lot of these big games come down to right. so. what do you see the future of the game this, with this wave here Next wave, uh, a lot of people seeing a lot of uh, four ship runs here. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, I think Scum Ability is going to help out a lot. Uh, just kind of get a little bit more excitement into the game. Kind of change things up a little bit of how how kind of play styles are set up right now. Um, other than that, uh, I don't really see a whole lot of. I mean, it's always going to be a change from from wave to wave, but uh, yeah. I mean, I think I think. I think it's going to be one of those things where Scum Villa is going to come out, people are going to, we're going to start playing all Scum, that's all you're going to see all over the place. Uh, but people will always usually kind of fall back into what they want. I mean, we saw a lot of Fat Hans today still. A lot of Fat Hans. I mean, like, we thought it was going to shift to Decimators and Outriders all over the place. We did see a couple. But, I mean, we kind of went back to what we were used to, what we're, what we're good with. So. And that's what ends up winning. Yeah. What's your next step? Are you going to be at a gig on the 31st? Uh, yeah, I'll probably go to a couple store championships. Um uh, depending on schedule, stuff like that. So usually I try to at least win one and then cool. stop showing up. <laughs> cool. Well, what I tell you is that, you know, the work that you do with the website, with everything that you do with uh, X-Wing in Atlanta is really, really cool. I appreciate you bringing a lot of new people into the game. Yeah. Um, I'm one of those guys, yeah. you know, in kind of a, a second party way, mm. you know, with these guys here at FCB. So thank you for everything mm. you do. Good luck to you. Yep, thank I you. I really appreciate thank it. You. you. Guys, this is the class act here, James Matchett, our runner-up at the 2015 FCB Championship. Cool. Thank you very yep, much. Thank you. Yep. So what, what we're going to do now is that we actually want to get the winner in here. Um, so this is, uh, this is our friend Wilson. I'm going to give you this, right. uh, the, the, the champion gets to wear this, so this, is, again, for everybody out here, this is his first tournament. He told me this right before the, oh, the last hey, game here. What a point out, regional 2013 was my first tournament and I won the regional. James actually <laughs> won 2013 was, was, was his first tournament as well, so at yeah. regional, so. Beginner's luck. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you got to be jacked. Yeah, I'm very excited. excited. So very tell, excited. Me, uh, tell me uh, what you saw in this last match with James. Um, what is it that decided to make you just go in for the kill there? Um, so I knew that getting in, getting into uh, Dash's donut was like key for me. So um, when I had the chance to sort of zoom my Z's in there, mm -hmm. I definitely took the opportunity. Sure. Um, the big thing that sort of scared me is that when he one-shotted one of those Z's, I was beginning to get a little frightened because... Right. His dice were very warm, and mine were pretty cold there until the end. Right. Um, so I, I, I thought I could take the list because I had enough ships and I had enough health that I could right. probably get through it. And um, I, I think a lot of people have um, not realized the benefit of having Key in with Stay on Target because it, it allows him to position the correct way always. And, you know, when you get advanced sensors, you're never losing your actions. Um, so it was, you know... Something I played with, and um, a, a good friend of mine who convinced me to start playing competitively, um, he beat me every single time with that list. Right. <laughs> so, uh, 
I was pretty excited to come out here and actually um, be able to win with it. It was a really cool list to see. Um, we watched you, and we, we were saying, well, the first thing we saw is that we, we saw how tight the formation was and say, okay, that's cool. How long is it going to be before he breaks formation and all hell breaks loose? We see you kind of bank around the, the, the uh, asteroid on the bottom right, right there. Uh, on our screen, it was the bottom right to you. It would be on yeah. the left-hand side. And then you're facing a, 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 an outrider just dead right on. So what are you thinking at this point? Um, I'm thinking that I have uh, – he's probably going to take out a ship, mm -hmm. um, but if he goes after my bees, I'll survive it. And then I know that I'm in a really good spot with my dial to be able to get in his way because sure. he's pushing the limit, so his dial really shortens up. I mean, the the YT is awesome without stress because you actually have pretty much everything available to you. Right. But the moment you put stress on it, it's it's really limited. Right. Um, and so I had played around with um, running a, a super dash, so I sort of knew how it flew, mm -hmm. and I knew that I could get Z's in the way um, and. You know, I was able to pretty much block up all of his channels, right. um, and what I really needed is to block in a way that it left Kian inside the donut hole, right. and I was able to do that, and you know, it was very I was, successful. I was really impressed in watching you, because we were talking about it over here, is that offensively you want to stay within the donut, within that level one where he can't attack you, or defensively stay out of level three where he can't attack you, right. but again, you can't do anything with that, so you were very... In, in my opinion, you were very aggressive with that. It actually paid uh, to your benefit. Outrider goes. The first thing you do is that you accidentally fly a guy off of the screen. Yeah. Well, that guy, I mean, I, I sacrificed him. I knew that he was going in there to do the blocking maneuver. Okay. And he's just 12 points. And, it, I mean, we're playing to till someone's table, so it doesn't matter sure. as much. But, you know, losing a Z in a situation where I right. can block, dash, and keep shots inside the donut is so much more right. important. Right. And you know, like playing outside or in, my Zs are terrible outside because they're only two dice. That's a great point. Um, and they're going to get evades and they're, you know, the range three is going to give them a, and then the rocks in the right. way. So I really need them to be right. up in front if I want to have dice on them. Because right. um, they're, they're great ships, but they're also pretty terrible. They're really good blockers, right? They're I mean, they're, good blockers. They're a, a better academy. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to flank with them. You want them kind of right in the middle. Yeah. And then you, you want to have something on the second level that's going to shoot right at them, whether it be a Millennium Falcon or an Outrider or something like that you know, right. behind it where it's going, to, it's going to cause a lot of havoc. You're the winner. Yeah. You've got the first round by at regionals, which I think is fantastic. You've got the, <laughs> the gold decimator, which is awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. You're coming out with a lot of swag. What's next for you? Um, more store championships. <laughs> the next yeah. one is, is at Gigabytes, I think, on the 31st of this month, which yep. is up in uh, Marietta. Plan yep. on going to that? I am. Cool. Probably running the same list. Same list. Probably, yeah. probably get beat all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you got beat all over the place because you see people anymore, see though. people are seeing what you've done, and yeah. you know, somebody who's who's in their first tournament again, you know, winning it all. So yeah. I can't thank you enough for showing it off to oh, us. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'd like to give a yeah. shout-out to Mark and Sarah. Thanks for staying up and watching. Yeah. <laughs> can't say enough, man. This is our champion. This is Wilson. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Everybody sis. who's been watching all day, thank you very much for watching. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, please give us all the feedback. We've already listed all the uh, all the websites. Shout-out to everybody who is here. Thanks for getting uh, coming here. If you've already gotten home, great. If you haven't gotten home, get home safely. That's most important. Have a great one. If you're watching, if you're, if you're watching the feed in your car, you're ruining your data. What the hell's wrong with you? Don't die because you're watching the feed. But uh, thanks very much for signing off for Chris, myself, our champion Wilson. See ya. Later out.